And away we go. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Township of Georgian Bay Planning Council for Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. And I'd like to call this meeting to order at 9 a.m. In the spirit of reconciliation, we wish to acknowledge the enduring relationship between Indigenous peoples and the territories that they traditionally occupied. We recognize and deeply appreciate the historic connection they have to this place, the land, the water, the sky, and all that live on, in, and above it. We are grateful for the opportunity to meet here, and we thank all the generations of Indigenous peoples who have taken care of this place and who continue to care for it. And we want to show our respect. Hundreds of years after the first treaties were signed, they remain relevant today. May they guide our decisions and our actions. We commit to learn, to educate, to honor sacred places, and to take action towards real truth and reconciliation. Megwitch. Council, any declarations of pecuniary interest or conflicts of interest or anything along that line that you wish to declare? All right. The first assignment we have is the adoption of the agenda. And I would like to propose an amendment to our agenda. And that was, as we discussed yesterday, to add the item of the uh, Go Home Lake uh, large object collection, I believe it was, that uh, Ms. Douglas uh, wanted to include. And uh, because you weren't with us yesterday, we thought we'd add it to today's agenda. Thank you very much. I wonder if there's any, Councillor Hazelton. If my memory serves me correctly, Councillor Cooper asked that we also discuss uh, large item pickup and potential barge pickup uh, as that's all related to um, that, that this topic. So um, we can make them separate items or we can uh, uh, discuss it as a group. I, 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 I would suggest we do it all, all together. We'll, we'll, we'll let Councillor Douglas lead it off and then I'm sure it'll, it'll expand to other uh, possible pickups. Um, and I'm thinking that we, we will do, we will do this discussion after we do the, all the other items we have on our agenda. Um, so under, under new, new business would be my proposal that we would do this. 8A? 8A, yes. Perfect. Any other? Well, then I'll have moved by. Council Wienkel, seconded by Councilor Jarvis, be it resolved that Council adopts the planning agenda of June 17th, June 7, rather, 2022, as amended to include 8A large item pickup. All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you. All right. With that adoption agenda, we go into our Municipal Act public meetings, which means we get to do a little introduction. This morning, there's a public meeting scheduled for two Shore Road closing applications. I will briefly summarize the procedure to be utilized for the meeting. First, the clerk will advise council as to when, how, and to whom notice of the public meeting was circulated for the proposed Shore Road closings being considered. Next, staff will advise of the purpose and effect of the bylaw provide for any other information that is relevant to the applications and staff will summarize any correspondence on file. From there, the public will have an opportunity to speak and provide comments to the bylaw being considered. Please be respectful of time and be concise with your comments. All commentators are requested to state their name and address. Council will then have an opportunity to provide comments for clarification. I now declare this meeting to be a public meeting pursuant to the Municipal Act of 2001, C-25, as amended to deal with following proposed shore road closing bylaws. R-21-12-14 for 305 and 309 Archie's Way, and R-22-18 for 1116 East Shore Road. To our clerk. 
Notice of the public meeting was published in a newspaper and notice was sent to the abutting neighbors in close proximity to the property at least 20 days prior to today's meeting. Thank you. And with that, to our deputy clerk, Ms. Levesque. Great. I'm just going to share my screen. <laughs> Okay, everyone can see my screen? Yeah, yes, we can. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so the first application this morning is for R21-12 and R21-13 for 305 and 309 Archies Road. The short road allowance has been requested by the applicants to allow for future development. The application was first presented at the November 9th, 2021 Planning Council meeting. During this meeting, the neighbor objected to the proposed reference plan due to a dock encroachment. Since then, the applicants have revised part one on the reference plan to exclude the location of the existing dock. The Sherwood allowance for part one is 1,147.26 square meters at a cost of $8 per square meter for a purchase price of $9,178.08 plus HST. And the Sherwood allowance for part two is 827 meters Point or 0.45 square meters at a cost of $8 per square meter for a purchase price of $6,619.60. The total purchase price for part one and part two is $15,797.68. The property is zone six mile lake. Both properties are zone six mile lake residential and there are no open building permits on file. And then we just have a location map as well as some aerial views. <clears throat> I'll just zoom in here on the survey and you can see right here, part one is what was excluded. So now that dock encroachment, um, which is the neighbor, which is 301 Archie's Lane. Um, and then we have the survey here as well, where you can see part one. So I believe Chris and Jim Hewitt are present this morning if you have any questions for the applicant. Um, I only see, oh yeah, both of them are here. I'll bring them over. Are, are we aware of any members of the public who may also want to be brought over with regard to this application? Uh, no member, members of the public have registered. Okay, thank you. Well, to the applicants, do you, do you wish to make any additional comments to what has been prevented by, presented by our uh, deputy uh, clerk? Uh, good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes, this is Jim Hewitt, uh, representing Jim and Christine Hewitt, husband and wife for 305 and 309. Just very quickly, I'd like to thank you for considering the matter. We purchased the lot recently from the Hookums, who have their original cottage in the, in the SRA. And we just like to clean up that matter and own our own waterfront. Thank you. Thank you. I suppose I should inquire whether there was any correspondence received on this file at this point. The only letter that was received was from Barbara Riddy, which was no objection, which is the neighbor 301. Okay, thank you. Council, any questions, comments? Items for consideration. Councillor Wienko, please. Uh, there's just a couple of issues, small issues. Uh, you skipped over pretty fast. What was the issue with the neighbor that you had to resolve? <clears throat> Through your worship to Councillor Wienko, um, there, there was an encroachment. So the neighbor's dock was encroaching on um, Mr. Hewitt's property. So to resolve that, they just revised their plan. Um, and separated that one piece into part one. So they, that now um, when I, I believe Miss, Mrs. Reddy doesn't own her Sherwood allowance, but if she does want to purchase it, she could purchase that part one piece. Um, so it's just, it, it excluded that small little triangle piece. I can bring it up on the screen if you want to see. Um, the other actual, actually, this one shows it better. Thank you. Oh, I 
situation? So I can't zoom any anymore. Um, unfortunately, I wish I could, yeah. but um, that little triangle piece there, which is part one, if you can see there, there's the dock. So um, it just resolves that encroachment issue. Uh, okay, the other issue is the dock on the Hewitt's property. If you go over there, you which, so it's on the second lot. The house is on one lot and the dock's on the second lot. Is that the way it looks? Um, maybe Chris or maybe Jim would be able to comment on yeah. that. Um, yes, that, that is correct. They, they've always, um, historically, the husband and wife kept it in separate title as we have. So the cottage is in the shore allowance on 305 and the existing dock in the middle is on 309. Okay, so I, I guess when these two lots are developed, you'll have to, you'll be interested in putting another dock in or so each each property has its own dock is, is that the plan or just to use a one dock for the both properties. Uh, in, in the short term, um, this is quite satisfactory. Uh, down the road, however, I mean, we used to own a cottage at 195 Winding Way where Councillor Wianco about eight years ago supported us at uh, of A. Um, and we, in particular, selected this property because it is two lots. And that allows us to do our two daughter estate planning for well down the road, I hope. Um, but, but there is an ambition to add another dock and perhaps another cottage at some point, um, but uh, not in the immediate future, like not in the next few years. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Councillor Cooper, follow the Councillor Jarvis, please. Hey, Mayor Kutzer, I think Councillor Jarvis was before me. Do you want me to uh, step aside, Councillor Jarvis? Okay, just a, a brief question. Um, the uh, I see from the survey it references um, I can't see it, but I screen, screen sort of uh, was able to zoom in and notice that uh, it basically the water's edge is one and the same as a controlled water level on Six Mile Lake. So that I just want to clarify, um, Sydney, that what these people are buying is in fact they're purchasing land that's inland from the water's edge, not under the water. Is that correct? Through your worship to Councillor Cooper, yes, that's correct. The regulated watermark or water's edge that's shown on the survey is all above water. And uh, sorry, just to clarify, so the water's uh, edge though is the dotted line or the uh, dark line that's uh, on the inside of the dock? I I wish I could zoom in a little bit further to clarify what this dotted line is, um, but they're purchasing to the, the dark line here. Um, so it'll just be part three and part two that are identified here. Okay, and the, and, and the shore road allowance basically starts on that dark line and goes back to the next dark, dark line that's sort of inland, um, uh, inland, uh, just near the back of the house, in other words, the cottage. It, correct, this would all be underwater. Right, but so they're purchasing the stuff Just, that's, that's there from the black line to the, the inland black line. Correct, so the calculations um, which they're paying for is the square meters for part three and part two, which are just everything inside the black line. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Com Councillor Jarvis. I had a quick question. The uh, letter of no objection, was that from that neighbor with a dock on which there was the encroachment? Do you worship to Councillor Jarvis? Um, that's correct, yes. Okay, now I'm going to, you've just opened a can of worms, both you and Councillor Cooper. I hope you realize this. Um, Let's stay, make sure we stay on topic of this application, please. It's specifically, okay, I, no problem. It says uh, on the map you're showing, and, and maybe you clarify that for Councillor Cooper. I don't know. Don't know. It says short road allowance. In the part that of the what looks like what's in the water, have I got that right? Where it says shore road allowance on the map we're looking at? 
So part of the original shoreboard allowance is underwater, but that's not the part that they're purchasing. They're right. only purchasing part three and part two, which is all above water. Which is all above water. So who decides who decides that the shoreboard allowance gets moved like that? Is that something that comes from the, the province or with guidance, or is that something we decide arbitrarily? Um, well, the, these lines are based off of the surveyor's work and part of our policies, we only sell to the water's edge, not anything underneath the water. So okay. um, that's where these, these lines are drawn out. <laughs> because if you look at where it says shore road allowance there, and I've been able to zoom in, it has arrows going from where it says shore road allowance to both dotted lines, not both solid lines. So it looks like that section that's within the dotted lines has been just moved backwards to the water line um, to give the same amount of property. It, I, anyway, listen, we won't worry about it now, but I, do, I think it is uh, something for discussion later on offline. That is a concern from my perspective. I think part of the confusion is the original shore road allowance would have been drawn um, more than 100 years ago. Yeah. And then you can notice on a note beside it that it says road allowance shown on plan and field notes of a survey of 1958. So probably the 1958 one was redrawn after the um, after the controlled water level took effect. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Peter. I see the note. OK, I appreciate so that. I, I think yeah. I think I think there's a confusion between I'll call it 100 years ago and 50 years ago. Yeah, actually, it's more than 50 years ago now. It's 60 odd years ago, 64. Anyway, OK, I'm, I'm taking care of. All right. Councillor Rienko, was your hand up from before or you, you had an additional comment? This additional question, uh, I'm looking at part one that's been broken off from the Hewitt property. And I guess that's going over to uh, the, uh, the neighbor's property. Are they buying it? Or give it, how, how is that part one being conveyed um, to the Riddies? Through your worship to Councillor Wienko, um, I haven't, they haven't inquired about purchasing it, but currently right now it'll just remain open. So it, it's township owned um, and we don't have any concern with it at the time. And um, the neighbor has reviewed this reference plan and they have no objection to it. So um, they're, they're comfortable with this. So, so if the Riddies were to buy the, the shore road allowance, that square, I mean, that triangle would still have to be purchased separately. Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm confused at what would be the future of that little square. So it'll, in, in perpetuity, it may be township property forever. And now they got a dock on township property. So do they have a, a, a land use permit for that uh, square to have their dock on, on township property? Uh, no, because it's a pre-existing dock, so we we wouldn't require um, any sort of license of occupation on this. It would just be like any other dock um, in Georgian Bay that, it, when they go to purchase their Sherwood allowance, they they would have um, the ability to purchase part one. Councillor Hazelton. Thank you. So I would like to. Uh... Have ask a couple of questions, if I may. Um, the first one is uh, on the short allowance thing. Uh, and this may be a good example, but um, if we look at the left side of your drawing, uh, Sydney, where it says part three, and then below that, it starts off with 35 R dash. And there's a dashed line right below that, that 35 R dash. And it would apply. It would apply based on uh, what the the uh, the um, survey says. Is that is the original shore road allowance. So, um, if that's the original shore road allowance, then presumably the original deed allows for the owner to own down to the back of that original shore road allowance. So. The, own, the, the, the owner of this property presumably already owns down to that dashed line. 
and we are now going to carve out part of the land that he currently owns and resell it to him uh, as part of a shore road allowance that we've arbitrarily crafted out based on a new water line. It just doesn't make any sense. The land registry office, I'm sure, shows that he owns down to that dashed line. I have another question, but I understand Clerk Way wants to weigh in on this. I may, Your Worship. Yes. Um, the interior line for the shore road, so the, I'm going to call it the top black line, does not move. And it's measured down from that distance. I understand that there's another issue on this particular location. It's probably been mismapped in the first place or misreferenced or surveyed originally which is why the correct line is now being shown. But that dotted line that it went, the middle dotted line, I'm going to call it, I don't know what, was originally missurveyed, which is why that solid black line is there. We're not selling land that was not ours to sell. I, I strongly suspect in this case, the original shore road allowance was drawn over 100 years ago, 150 years ago or something, at which time all the land was probably crowned. And then back in 1958, a survey was done, and it was probably that survey laid out a shore road allowance based on what was then the water line. And probably because a lot of Six Mile Lake was settled in the 50s and 60s, probably at that point, the Crown was selling land and they sold, would have sold it down to that shore road allowance as marked by the survey of 1958. That would be my speculation of what happened, you know, 65 years ago. And therefore, even though the original shore road, in other words, they redrew the shore road allowance back in the 50s um, because they were surveying these lots to be um, uh, sold at that time. That, that would be my speculation. Oh, I, I will just offer that it's interesting speculation. I would be very surprised that when somebody buys a piece of land, that the four corners of that piece of land aren't well articulated, irrespective of any concepts of a shore road allowance. And all I'm trying to highlight here is it would appear that the four corners of the lot that was purchased uh, are more representative of what that dashed line is uh, than not. Anyway, I don't wanna make a big deal out of it. I wanna just highlight the fact that this is, uh, this is to me very confusing and uh, I, I would be extremely um, supportive of us figuring out when somebody has bought a piece of land where the four corners of that land are because that to me is very, very important, especially as we start thinking about short allowances, because what he's, what he's purchased should be cast in concrete and only the short allowance is the variable. Anyways, that's, um, that was just a, uh, an opportunity to explore something that I think uh, we all are wrestling with uh, from an accuracy perspective. But um, the other question that I have does relate to part one. And I'm concerned about two things. Uh, number one, uh, does the neighbor who owns the dock that is attached to part one, are they aware of the current township policy that will force them to buy the show road allowance if they need to maintain that dock? Uh, that's number one, because that's apparently what our policies are. And number two, uh, we have side yard setback requirements for docks. And uh, we have had such situations, certainly in Ward 4, where people have been forced to move their docks because there's not a five meter setback from a, an extended lot line. And I would suggest when I look at this, that there's not a five meter, uh, five yard, five meter setback from the dock to the lot line. And that is a potential issue that maybe these neighbors aren't uh, gonna be concerned about, but future ownership may be, and then that dock would have to be moved anyways. So um, I'd like confirmation on the fact that 
this doc is is legal from a setback standpoint before we go approving it. Thank you. Through your worship, Councillor Hazelton, um, I have not had discussions with the neighbor in regards to requirements of purchasing the Shorewood allowance if they do intend on replacing the dock in the future. Um, but just to note, the dock was already um, not meeting the required setbacks before this revised survey was um, completed. So um, it, it doesn't really have any relevance. It's only if they were proposing a, a new dock, um, those setbacks would come into play. Um, and I'm not sure what the, the setback is for part one. I, again, I have a hard time reading the numbers on the, the survey. I don't know if uh, Mr. Hewitt is able to comment um, if there, there is a five meter setback there, but regardless, um, it, yeah, it doesn't I, really matter. <laughs> I can comment if you like. On the original approach to the neighbor, they're quite nice people. Um, I actually offered to move the dock. It doesn't comply and it's well within the five meter setback that they're required to have. We were, um, sort of told in discussions with the town that this is a grandfather dock that's been there for 40 years and I offered to move it at our expense to make this more easy and because their uh, waterfront has already taper, ta tapered by the neighbor who purchased the other shoreline road allowance on the other side of them uh, they didn't want to move their dock so I just simply moved the line so they know they don't comply they know they're grandfathered and they know uh, as adults that they'll have whatever consequences they have down the road um, I really hope we don't confuse our issue where we've accommodated our neighbor with the simple purchase of the shoreline road allowance in front of our lots. All right. Councillor Cooper. Um, thank you. And, and I just wanted to um, say that uh, with this approval we're basically then going to the land registry office and telling the land registry office this is where we think the shore road allowance is that's what we're doing and the land registry office is saying okay so um i see clerk way wants to comment on that but before i uh stop here i would like to make that um observation and and uh, also on six mile lake i'd like to make the observation for our future discussions where we are never selling land under the water on Six Mile Lake. It's a controlled level, but nevertheless, never selling the water, uh, land under the water. So there's um, my comments. Thank you. Berkeley. Correct. We do not sell land that is under the water. Um, this isn't an arbitrary line. This is a professional licensed Ontario land surveyor who has gone back and done the history mapped it out and determined where the original starting point for the shore road was located. The line is then drawn from there to the water's edge or the high water mark, sorry, to make that determination for what portion of the shore road allowance is currently above the water. We're not arbitrarily deciding where that line is. They're professional surveyors who do this for a living. And then those get registered and vetted through the land registry office. This is not an arbitrary line that we are making up willy-nilly. Yeah, and I think it's worthwhile noting that parts two and parts three are on a registered plan, 35R-26630. So Bracebridge has that plan in their files. It is a registered plan. And therefore they have acknowledged it and accepted it. And we're, and we're accepting this survey and saying this is where we think, along with the surveyor, where the shore road allowance is. That's all I was trying to point out. Thank you. It's for future discussion. I think, Council, we have to try to concentrate on the file that is in front of us and not bring in all sorts of other issues and other locations. I don't think that is fair to the applicant or to staff. With that, I have moved by Councillor Hazelton, seconded by Councillor Douglas. Be it resolved that Council pass closing bylaw 2022-054 to stop up, close, and convey part of the original 66-foot shore road allowance in front of Lot 20, Concession 1, and part Lot 20, Concession 1, being part of the 66-foot shore road allowance shown on plan and field notes of summer resort location attached to patent 3824, being parts 1 and 2 on 35R-26783, Township of Georgian Bay, 
305 and 39 Archie's Road for the purchase price of $15,797.68. All those in favor. And that is carried. So I do have one question now and I'm looking at it, and that is Ms. Levesque, the, you're making reference to a plan that is a different number than what's shown on the survey number. I just wanted to, well, sorry, that is the revised plan. So I, I, I extract, retract that. I see that's on a different number. My apologies, I was looking at the wrong page. All right, that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So our next application is as regards to 1116 East Shore Road. Ms. Levesque, please. Okay. So the next Shore Road allowance is for um, 116 East Shore Road, McNeely. Uh, the Shore Road allowance has been requested by the applicants to allow for future development. The Shore Road allowance for part one is 1,241 square meters at a cost of $12 per square meter for a total purchase price of $14,892 plus HST. The Shore Road allowance application was received on December 20th, 2021. The property is zoned shoreline residential uh, type one and there are no open building permits on file. And we have just a location map here, as well as some aerial images. <clears throat> and we have the site sketch it shows part one, as well as the survey. We'll just zoom in here. And um, I just wanted to note, I did receive um, an email from Rudy Mack, and I'll just read it just because I think this question may come up. Um, I'll just read it word for word, but as for mentioning the high water mark of the 177.4 contour level on this plan, this elevation or contour line is a zoning setback used for parcels that are attached or directly affected by water levels on Georgian Bay. Gibson Lake has a series of falls before joining the lower Musquash River and reaching the Georgian Bay. This no longer makes the high water mark of 177.4 relevant to, to Gibson Lake and the mention of it on this reference plan serves no purpose. And I did receive um, permission from Rudy Mack to read that email. Um, the applicants, Sean and Lynn McNeely are present this morning if you have any questions for them. And I'll just bring them over. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. Good morning. Do you, do either of you have any comments you'd like to add in addition to what the uh, deputy clerk has already presented? Um, no, I think that uh, it was quite clear. I, I do have a question. And um, again, uh, my name is Sean McNeely, and I'm speaking on behalf of my wife, Lynn, and I uh, regarding this uh, purchase at 116 East Shore Road. I'd like to thank you this morning for hearing uh, hearing us. Um, the only question that I, and comment that I had is, well, first of all, that um, we've owned the property since 2007, and we've talked from the very beginning about purchasing the Shore Road Allowance, and uh, just thought that this was the right time to do it. The only question I had is that I'd had some discussion um, in the early stages of this, and we were told that we had started the application process prior to the increase in cost, and that we would be purchasing this at, at the $8 uh, purchase price. Hmm. 
Ms. Levesque, do you, do you know when the original application was made? Yes, um, for your worship. The application was received on December 20th, but um, I do apologize. That was my mistake. I'm just going through my emails now, and I do actually have a note here um, that does stipulate that we would hold the price of $8 per square meter. Um, I don't know, um, Clerk Way, if we can have a moment to revise the resolution, um, and I just have to do those calculations quick. I do apologize for that. That's my mistake. $9,928. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Because $8 is two thirds of $12. And therefore, I just took a two thirds of the amount you stated, and that would become $9,928. It's the old accountant to me coming out. All right. Any, any other? Comments. I've noted the uh, the revised price on on the uh, resolution. Hmm. Councillor Cooper. I'll be very brief and thank you. <clears throat> um, I was very interested to hear the notes from the surveyor with respect to the term high water mark and one seventy seven four not applying. Uh, certainly. I concur, concur completely with that. And um, actually the term high watermark applies to Georgian Bay itself, not inland lakes. So uh, I just wanted to make that point and uh, I'm glad to hear that somebody's, uh, the surveyor is catching that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions, Council? Councilor Hazelton. You're muted, sir. Probably a good thing. <laughs> Shuts me up. Um, so, um, this is uh, not something that, in my opinion, is going to be uh, impacting my decision to approve this. Um, but I'm curious the if we look at the right side of the survey, uh, we see that the distance between two blocks is 21.87 meters, and the water line looks like it's uh, another two or three meters out from there. Um, so are we selling more than 20 meters of shoreward allowance? And if we are, why? Our Three worship to Councillor Hazelton. Our purchase price is based off of the 66 feet, so 20 meters. So we're charging for 20 meters, but the, the survey is showing noticeably more than 20 meters. I'm confused. Ms. Wayne. I'm just going to answer this in general terms. If the water line is lower than the 66, the original 66 feet, we sell to this wherever that water line is below that point. If not, we're left with a strip in the middle that the township still owns. But we do not charge more than the 66 feet depth. So respecting our mayor's direction that we want to don't want to drag other matters into this discussion um i would like to table this topic um we see on the back of the drawing here the original shore road allowance line the previous application also had a original shore road allowance line but it happened to be in the middle of what we were selling i find this all extremely confusing uh, and I think that by, by example, we are exploring anomalies, which suggest that we don't have a consistent pattern. We actually have a, an endless group of anomalies. Um, and uh, I think we want to be uh, uh, using examples like this to learn perhaps what we don't know uh, or where the anomalies are that, that blow up our assumptions that we've been making here. 
I approve this from my, from my perspective. I just think that uh, this is a, an, a, another example that we can learn from as we try to uh, uh, sort out this SRA issue. Thank you. I, I would venture to respond to that, that it would be amazing how many properties in our township have unusual anomalies, you know, people building on their neighbor's property because they thought the survey was here where it was there and all things like that. I think that the nature of the geography and the history of numerous surveyors over many years and people were, I don't know about you, but I know stories of people just arbitrarily moving stakes to put it where they thought the property line should be versus where it was surveyed and things like that. So, you know, there's a lot of anomalies in this township. That's my little editorial response. Any other questions or comments? C Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mayor. And I, li I liked what you had to say, and that's why we need to clear up our process so there aren't anomalies, or in other words, our practices need to be consistent. Thank you. Hmm. Any other comments? I have moved by Councillor Cooper, seconded by Councillor Bocek. Be it resolved that council passed, a co passed closing bylaw 2022-055 to stop up, close, and convey part of the original shore row allowance in front of lot 14, concession two, being part one of 35R-2678, sorry, Township of Georgian Bay, 1116 East Shore Road for the purchase price of $9,928 plus HST and that council pass by law, deeming bylaw 2022-056 to deem lot 14 plan M296 Gibson, now in the township of Georgian Bay, not to be a registered plan of subdivision for the purposes of the Planning Act, RSO 1990 CP 13 S 53. All those in favor. And that is carried, thank you. Thank you. All right, and that ends the public, the Municipal Act public meeting portion of our meeting. Which means we now get to switch to the Planning Act public meetings and another introduction. This morning, there's a public meeting scheduled for two proposed zoning bylaw amendments and one official plan amendment. I will briefly summarize the procedure to be utilized for the meeting. First, the clerk will advise council as to when, how, and to whom notice of the public meeting was circulated for the proposed amendments being considered. The clerk will also advise of the appeal procedures. Next, staff will advise of the purpose and effect of the bylaws and provide any other information that is relevant to the applications, and the clerk will summarize any correspondence on file. From there, the public will have an opportunity to provide comments on the amendments being considered. Please be respectful of time and be concise with your comments. All commentators are requested to state their name and address for the record. After the public discussion, the public meeting will be closed. Council then have an opportunity to provide comments for clarification. I now declare this meeting to be a public meeting pursuant to section 34 of the Planning Act to deal with the following proposed amendments. 022-02 and Z21-10 for Lamoureux and Z22-09 for Graham. To our clerk, please. Notice that the public meeting was sent by first class mail to the respective owners and assessed persons within 120 to 800 meters of the property subject to the proposed applications and to those persons and agencies likely to have an interest in the applications. These notices were sent at least 30 days prior to today's meeting. Included in each notice was an explanation of the purpose and effect of the proposed applications and a key map showing the location of the properties or a description of the lands to be affected by the proposed amendments. Other relevant information may also have been provided. These circulations were all provided in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act and the Township of Georgian Bay Official Plan. Members of the public are advised at this point that unless they make an oral or written submission to council before council makes a decision on these applications, that any subsequent appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal may be dismissed by the tribunal. Anyone who wishes to be notified of council's decision respecting the proposed zoning bylaw amendments must submit a written request to the planning department. 
Thank you. To our planner. And Ms. G, would you be so kind as to remind me as how I should correctly pronounce your name? Hi, <clears throat> uh, my name is Jen Gaudet, but Gaudet. my colleague Grisimran Sani will be presenting both applications. Okay, sorry. No worries. I guess she has to be brought over. Ms. Annie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I was just uh, typing in a message to be added in as a panelist. Um, as I explained, I will be speaking to the first application. Please give me a minute to share my screen. Everyone can see my screen? Okay. Yes, thank you. Apologies. So I will be speaking to the first official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application O2202 NZ2110 for 764 Honey Harbor Road. Uh, the applicant for the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application is Jeremy Lamaru. And the purpose of the proposed zoning amendment is to permit a reduced plot area of 0.8 hectares and a reduced frontage of 76.2 meters to facilitate the development of the lands for a detached residential dwelling. The zoning bylaw requires a minimum area of 10 hectares and a minimum lot frontage of 120 meters, while the official plan requires a minimum lot area of one hectare and a minimum frontage of 152 meters. Staff recommend that the Township of Georgian Bay Planning Council grant approval to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application. Um, here's the location of the subject property. It is located on the east side of Honey Harbor Road. Uh, the subject property is currently part of a larger parcel, which is municipally addressed at 764 Honey Harbor Road. A consent application to sever the subject property has uh, been provisionally approved by the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, the area of the subject property is approximately 0.8 hectares and the frontage along Honey Harbor Road is approximately 76.20 meters. Here's an aerial review of the subject property. Uh, the property is currently occupied by a tool shed and the property is surrounded by detached residential development to the west of Honey Harbor Road as well as further south across uh, Muskie Bay Road. Um, here's a site plan depicting the extent of the subject property um, shown as part one on the on your screen. Um, staff conducted a site visit for the subject property on May 18. Um, here are the photos from that visit. Figure one shows the entrance to the subject property, um, and figure two shows the existing state of the subject property. It's largely vacant with the exception of a tool shed and, and an outhouse. Um, figure three here shows the existing shed on the property and figure four shows the existing outhouse, which will be uh, removed. In terms of the policy framework, the subject property is considered rural lands in context of the PPS. It is also designated rural in the district and township position plan, as well as zoned rural in the township zoning bylaw. Uh, the district plan identifies eastern fox snake habitat on the subject property. And this was identified during the severance process. And the district at the time requested that the severance be made conditional on written confirmation from the ministry, stating that the proposed development will, have, will not have any negative impacts on species at risk or significant wildlife habitat on the property. Staff have since received confirmation from the district that the ministry does not comment on small scale developments and has recommended that the applicant be made aware of the responsibility to protect species at risk and significant wildlife habitat in accordance with the Endangered Species Act. As such, no further study or approvals are required at this stage to address uh, the regulated habitat. Um, in terms of the planning report, the applicant's proposal is consistent with the PPS as residential development and accessory uses are permitted on the subject property. Uh, it is it conforms to the district official plan as the permitted uses are permitted as the proposed uh, single detached residential uses are permitted on rural lands. 
uh, with regard to the township of Fisa plan, the proposed uses are permitted on the subject property. The proposed lot size is generally comparable to and compatible with other lots surrounding the subject property. Additionally, the resulting lot pattern is considered appropriate for the location along a district road. Uh, the applicant has submitted a letter from a licensed septic installer, which confirms that the subject property can accommodate a well and septic system. Staff are aware, staff are of opinion that the um, application meets the general intent and otherwise conforms to the official of the township official plan. With regards to the zoning bylaw, the detached uh, detach residential uses is a permitted use in rural zone. As previously noted, the proposed lot size is comparable to the lot sizes to the west and south of the subject property and is considered appropriate for a lot that runs on a district road and intended to be used for a single detached residential dwelling. And the requested amendment for a reduced lot area in frontage is therefore reasonable. Uh, moving on to the recommendations, staff recommend approval of the application on the basis that the proposal is consistent with the PPS, conforms to the district official plan, um, and except for the requested amendments, the proposal conforms to the municipal official plan and complies with the relevant provisions of the zoning bylaw. The general intent of the official plan and zoning bylaw is, main, is maintained. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions now. Well, thank you very much. Um, to our clerk. Are there is there any correspondence uh, uh, from the public on this uh, particular mm -hmm. file? One letter of no objection was received from the District of Muskoka, and one letter of support was received from Larry Braid. Thank you. And are the applicants or any members of the public present who wish to uh, comment on this file? I'll bring them over. Thank you. We have the applicant, Mr. Limero, and I have Mr. Braid as well, who is in attendance. Well, I first ask Mr. Limero, is there any comments that you uh, make, wish to make in addition to what the planner has stated? Hello, can anybody hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you. Um, no, kind of everything seems to be uh, in order as far as what um, uh, the planner from over at uh, Jail and Richards uh, updated. So um, um, I'm hoping everything goes through. Uh, this has been a really long process for us. So uh, um, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Bray, do you wish to make any additional comments on this file? Uh, Mayor Kutz here, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can't see my picture on there. No, neither can we. Is that right? Well, I wonder, oh, start video, okay. How's that? You've now appeared. There we go. Um, I have no objection with this. This uh, application started in 2013. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, it, the uh, conditions weren't uh, completed within the year. And maybe that's something council should address, extend these uh, requirements for conditions up to two years, because some of them are uh, uh, quite in depth and they take a, a lot of time to uh, go back and forth, especially if uh, the district of Muskoka is involved. Um, anyways, uh, not that I want to uh, delay this application anymore. Uh, oh, and by the way, we have a house just up the road from this, and that's why I'm here today. So we got notice. And uh, I did a lot of investigating on this and sent a whole bunch of uh, uh, PDFs to the, the township. I don't know whether they shared them with council members or, or not. Uh, but anyways, uh, in 2013, the zoning of that whole property was C3. And uh, for whatever reason, and I know uh, Councillors Cooper and Bocek and, and uh, Wienko and Douglas will know that after uh, the new bylaw 2014-75 was passed, um, for whatever reason, an awful lot of properties got zoned to something other than what they were originally. 
Um, a lot of them went to waste dump, WDs. And we kind of had to laugh about that, but um, that was uh, the, the consultant kind of scratched his head too, wondering why. So I don't know whether uh, uh, Jeremy wants his old uh, uh, zoning back because he lost an awful lot of uh, uh, abilities to do things on the property. Plus it changed the uh, requirements for uh, sizes and frontages. Uh, and that's why you're here today doing a, a zoning amendment. But uh, take this offline. I'm happy to share uh, with you, uh, Mayor Kutzier, all the, uh, uh, the minutes and, and uh, reports and all that sort of thing that I was able to dig up. And I'm sure staff could do it too, because I sent them to uh, Mercia. But uh, anyways, let's move on and uh, get Jeremy uh, going here so he can build a nice house down the road from us. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Wade, I gather we have no other members of the public that wanted to comment. Correct, there are no other members of the public for this file. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lamaru and Mr. Braid. And with that, we're going to turn it over to Council for any questions or comments that they may have before we uh, get to the resolution. Councilor Bochuk, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And um, I just wanted to add a comment here that I've worked with the Lamaru family. This is a, a typical example of, of what we're trying to achieve in the future. Um, this, this property was gifted some time ago, um, back in, in the, in the early teens. And I've been working with this family since 2014. Um, I think I recorded nine different planning technicians, planning companies and planning directors that have been involved in this. And of course, um, Every time I sit down with them, the rules have changed a bit, the demands have increased, and, and um, it's been a very difficult and long process moving forward just to follow the demands that have been made uh, to this family to get this severance. Since that time, Jeremy's had a little baby, um, gotten married, and they're looking to build a little house on Honey Harbor Road beside their family. And this is exactly what I've been pushing for for the last four years so that the township can achieve this and make affordable lots for, for people. Keep our youth here, keep our workforce here. It's all part of our strategic plan. And I certainly will endorse this application and, and support um, this moving forward. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Hazelton. Um, yeah, I, I concur with uh, Councillor Bochuk. I think that this is the kind of thing that we want to do. One of the concerns I have, though, is that in the world of real estate, um, there is uh, no ability that I'm aware of, except perhaps in zoning, that would allow us to control the opportunities going forward. And so, for example, um, you know, we help out uh, you know, the Lamaroos with this property. Um, which, by the way, I, I will support. Um, but um, in the world of real estate, uh, he could turn around and sell it for a massive profit to somebody else. And the intent of what we are talking about here, which is attainable, affordable, whatever the right terminology is housing uh, in our community for, for people of the community kind of goes out the window. And so uh, what I would um, like to task staff with is to try to come up with some guidance for us on council where we can help to maintain the integrity of the intent here. And I think uh, as Councillor Bocek has outlined, the intent here is to help families uh, attain properties in the community and stay in the community and raise families in the community. Um, and that is exactly what we want to be trying to do. We just need to find a way to keep it going as opposed to, um, uh, let it um, fall into what we'll call the open market window where 
uh, it's a massive profit gain for somebody and then all the intent goes out the window. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lamaru, you, you wanted to make an additional comment? Yeah, so just um, the whole intent of it is to uh, become our personal home. Uh, there's no intent whatsoever of selling. I, I mean, we can put it in writing. Um, we're trying to keep the whole, it was uh, one farm at one point, the whole entire acreage between my father, um, my aunt, two uncles. So uh, we're trying to keep everything all intact as one parcel of land, if that makes sense, It'd never be sold. Hmm, thank you. Any additional comments from any other counselor? The resolution or the motion I have in front of me is moved by Councillor Wienko and seconded by Councillor Hazelton. Be it resolved that Council received Development Service Report 2022 41 and adopts Amendment 17 to the official plan to permit a reduced lot area of 0 0.81 hectares and a reduced frontage of 76.2 meters for the subject property. And the Council enacts bylaw 2022 057, being a zoning bylaw amendment, Z21 10, to permit a reduced lot area of 0.81 hectares and a reduced frontage to 76.2 meters for the subject property. All those in favor? And that has unanimous approval. Thank you. Mayor, could I make a, a quick comment? I thought you just did a moment ago. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead. Um, can we ask staff to um, provide a communication to uh, Stephanie Prim, who we talked about yesterday, uh, and give her um, a copy of the this this process that we've just gone through? Uh, because I think uh, on an interim basis, this process may be very helpful to her and achieving her objectives. Uh, while we try to uh, resolve the longer term uh, planning processes of how we do this on a more broad scale. But I think as an example, this would be very helpful for her to understand the steps that have been gone through and the fact that uh, council will approve these kinds of things to achieve the outcomes that she's trying to achieve and that uh, Mr. Lamer was trying to achieve. Thank you. I'm just gonna correct you say council may approve depending upon the particulars of any particular application. All right, thank you. And, and we can do that, Mr. Hazelton. Um, next on our agenda is zoning bylaw amendment Z22-09 for 1032 Island 540. Ms. Um, Sania, I believe you're, you're addressing this one as well? Yes, I will be speaking to it. I'm sharing my screen in a minute. Thank you. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm presenting a zoning bylaw amendment application Z2209 for 1032 Island 540. Uh, the applicants for the proposed uh, application are Thomas and Lynn Graham. The purpose of the proposed amendment is to facilitate the construction of an addition to an existing legal non-compliant dwelling by permitting a lot coverage of 9%, while 7% is permitted by the zoning bylaw. This amendment will also recognize the existing non-compliant rear, rear yard setback, side yard setbacks for accessory structures, and the existing undersized nature of the lot. Staff recommend that Planning Council grant approval to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application. Um, here's a map showing the location of the subject property. It is located on present island in Georgian Bay. The subject property has an area of approximately 0 0.16 hectares and a frontage of approximately 27.8 meters along the shoreline. Um, here's an aerial view of the subject property. Uh, the subject property is surrounded by an undeveloped creed lot to the north, residential dwellings to the east and west, and a water body towards the south. Here's a side plan depicting the proposed addition, and I can zoom into it after the presentation, um, open up the survey. 
Uh, the subject property is currently occupied by a single story cottage, which has an area of approximately 70.95 square meters. The accessory structures include a bunkie, which is located towards the northwest of the subject property and a shed located towards the northeast. A patio is uh, located towards the southwest of the subject property and connected to the board uh, to the boardwalk, which further connects to the dock. The applicant is proposing an addition of approximately 37.16 square meters located towards the front yard of the subject property, um, which will increase the lot coverage to 9%. Uh, staff conducted a site visit for the property on May 18. Um, here are the photos from the visit. Figure one shows the existing dwelling and the sleeping cabin. Um, figure two shows the close-up of the existing sleeping cabin on the property. Um, figure three here shows the existing dock and figure four shows the view of the subject property from the dock. Figure five here shows the existing shed and figure six shows the rear of the dwelling and the shed is visible in the back as well. Oh, right here. In terms of the policy framework, uh, the subject property is considered rural lands in context of the PPS. Uh, the property is designated waterfront area in district official plan uh, with and moderate to high potential for archaeological resources has been identified on the subject property. In the township official plan, the property is designated waterfront and fish habitat has not been identified adjacent to the subject property. As per policy D.1.6.2, uh, the shoreline is to be treated as type 1 fish habitat until a fish habitat assessment is conducted. In this case, however, a study has not been requested as properties on present island are limited to one dock in the zoning bylaw. As a subject property has an existing dock, um, the no further impacts are in, uh, anticipated to fish habitat. Um, therefore, the study has not been requested at this time. In terms of the zoning bylaw, the subject property is zoned shoreline residential island type 1. Um, in terms of the planning analysis, uh, the applicant's proposal is consistent with the PPS as residential development and accessory uses are permitted on the subject property. The applicant is proposing an addition to the existing dwelling, which will continue to be uh, privately serviced. The proposal is compatible with the surrounding development. With regards to the district of future plan, the proposed residential development is a permitted use in, in waterfront designations and therefore conforms to the district official plan. No negative impacts are anticipated to the abutting water body as a dwelling post addition will have a setback of more than 34 meters from the high water mark. Further, the proposed addition is not considered a major development and an archaeological impact assessment is therefore not requested at this time. With regard to the township official plan, the proposed uses are permitted on the subject property. Staff note that the subject property has an area of approximately 0.16 hectares and a frontage of about 27.8 meters along the shoreline. While the official plan requires an area of approximately 0.4 hectares in a frontage of approximately 60 meters. Uh, the subject property is an existing legal undersized plot and no amendment to official plan is required at this time. Um, in context of the zoning bylaw, a detached residential dwelling is a permitted use in shoreline residential island one zones. Um, in, sorry, shoreline residential island type one zone. And the proposed addition is located in the front yard of the subject property, but located with setback more than 34 meters from the shoreline. The addition therefore has no foreseeable visual or environmental impacts on the butting water body. And the proposed amendment for increased lot coverage is therefore reasonable. The dwelling also has a legal non-compliant rear yard setback of about 5.9 meters, while 10 meters is required. Uh, the subject property is surrounded by a vacant feed lot to the north and no impacts are anticipated due to the reduced setback. This legally existing non-compliant setback will be recognized through this amendment. The existing undersized nature of the lot will also be recognized as well as the legal non-compliant setbacks of the bunkie and shed uh, will be recognized also through this amendment. Staff recommend approval of the application on the basis that the proposal is consistent with the PPS, conforms to the provisions of the district official plan and municipal official plan, and complies with the relevant provisions of the zoning bylaw with the exception of the requested amendments. The general intent of the official plan and zoning bylaw is maintained. I note the comments submitted by the building department um, state that the existing septic system on the subject property is undersized to accommodate the expanded dwelling. Based on this, staff had previously recommended approval of the application with the holding provision, which would be uh, conditional on updating the septic. 
On further correspondence with the building department, staff had been advised that this issue will be addressed at the time of building permit application for the expansion. A holding provision is therefore no, no, no longer requested uh, by staff. And that is the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take any questions now. Thank you very much for that. Um, Clerk Way, any correspondence on file that uh, um, you would share with us at this time? Mm -hmm. One letter of no objection was received from the District of Muskoka, and two letters of support were received from Nancy Hunter and Tom Borsa. And I believe I saw that the applicant was in our waiting room. I don't know if there's any members of the public as well. I don't think so. No, I believe it's just the applicant. There's Mr. Graham now. Mr. Graham, I didn't know if you have any additional comments you'd like to make. I'm going to presume no, but if you change your mind, just let us know, please. Council, any questions, comments? or observations that you'd like to make. Councillor Cooper, please. Um, I wonder if, thank you for the report, by the way, and thank you, Mayor, for recognizing me. I wondered if we could bring up the survey. I, I looked at this application and uh, I noticed the survey drawing that we had in the application in our, our uh, agenda didn't show the shoreline, but you showed something that showed more of the docks and the shoreline. Uh, I wanted to see that and just ask a couple of questions, please. I'll share my screen. Okay. <clears throat> I can zoom in wherever you'd like, Councillor Cooper. Yes, so I, I just took a couple of questions with respect to zooming in to the lower portion here near the shoreline. And if you could zoom in around there in the shore road allowance, or I see or something to that effect. And I see the 177 for all the measurements that you're using in planning uh, the, the, or approving this document are related to the 177 for, correct? Thank you, Ms. Mayor. That is correct, uh, Councilor Cooper. So, this reference to the water's edge, uh, present water's edge, is just an, a notional line, so to speak, uh, but has nothing to do with this plan? Yes. And is there shore road allowance here? Um, through Mr. Mayor, I believe uh, the applicants own the land to the water's edge in this case. You mean to the to the high water mark? They own, there's no shore allowance. In this case, they own the entirety of the land as shown on the survey. Yeah, so islands on Georgian Bay don't have any shore road allowance. So, so I'm saying um, your, your uh, survey is showing a water's edge, but that's sort of notional from a planning perspective. And I would assume from an ownership perspective that uh, um, because it's an island, there isn't any shore road allowance that uh, the acreage that we're calculating and the planning approval we're giving is based on the area from the 177.4 and back. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Ms. Tamir, uh, that is correct, Councillor Cooper. All calculations with regards to the setbacks as well as the lot coverage, lot area, everything um, beyond the 177.4 high water mark is relevant to all planning calculations in this case. Thank you for the clarification. Anyone else wish to comment? If not, I will read the motion. I have moved by Councillor Jarvis, seconded by Councillor Douglas. Be it resolved that Council received Development Service Report 2022-42 and an Acts Bylaw 2022-058 being a Zoning Bylaw Amendment Z22-09 to facilitate an addition to an existing cottage by permitting increased lot coverage and recognizing the existing non-complying rear yard setback side yard setbacks for accessory structures and the existing undersized nature of the lot. Any further comments? All those in favor? 
And that is carried. Thank you. All right, that, that leads us to new business. And the, we have added to our new business um, as new, an item uh, for Ms. Douglas with regards to um, the Go Home Lake large object pickup, I believe it was. And uh, that discussion was going to expand into other um, large item pickup discussion. Ms. Douglas. We seem to have- Mr. Walked. Mayor, we're having internet problems out in this area right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if Cynthia has the same problem I've been having all morning. I've been getting about half the conversation. So uh, she's probably the same situation as yeah. I am. I can understand it. The, the weather unfortunately affects our internet connection. Maybe someday we'll meet again in person. Time will tell. Um, so let's then, um, Councillor Cooper, you wanted to make some comments, I believe, in regards to large item pickup. Why don't, why don't you make those comments at this point? And if Ms. Douglas reconnects or is able to reconnect, then we'll let her um, make her comments. Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Mayor. And um, my comments are simply that, uh, well, there are a few comments and uh, I think it's a, a subject that needs uh, quite a bit of attention. I've heard from a lot of people in our communities, uh, especially out on coastal Georgian Bay that uh, the um, large garbage pickup um, is a very important service. It has been dropped by the district. Um, deemed to be unsafe and a variety of other uh, things and, uh, and it was safe before but it's not safe now I don't quite get it um, but I think maybe what we need to do is um, uh, get some discussion going maybe not today but at some point uh, as to where and when and how frequently we have garbage large garbage services and we need to find sources for those services other than the District of Muskoka. And I know that uh, Councillor Hazelton has already mentioned that uh, put in a phone call to uh, one company that might be able to provide this service, but there may be other options. And, and I think it's important for our staff to understand that, uh, you know, uh, any of us councillors would be more than pleased to at least get in touch with some of the companies that might help with this service but our staff would also have to give consideration as to who's going to man this service. You know, we can get a barging company that will run the barge and, and so forth, but um, I, I think that's a, a consideration. So I, I, all I would like to say is that uh, I don't think we need to, it's my suggestion that we not look at large garbage uh, just in a vacuum about one particular location, be it Honey Harbor or Go home lake or wherever. Uh, I think we need to look at the entire township and see how frequently we should be providing or can provide the service and where, as I said, and when. Um, and, um, you know, when I say when, I'm talking about frequency. So I, there's a lot of people that are pretty disappointed, I'll put it that, and that's the politest way I can put it, uh, in terms of. Um, uh, this service no longer being available, and it's very unhelpful uh, reading letters uh, from the District of Muskoka and, and the comments that it only affects a few people is complete and total nonsense. So I uh, wanted to register that um, comment about uh, it only affecting a few people. So there we go. Those are my comments, and uh, I, I think we could get into the nitty gritty of it in due course, but I, I and maybe that means uh, submitting some suggestions as to frequency, location, et cetera, et cetera. We obviously have to look, look at the costs, um, but I'm, I am convinced that there's a pretty good opportunity that if we do this uh, and, and uh, we may find that we can get a service that's equal to or better than we've had in the past and maybe even less expensive, you never know. Uh, so 
it could be uh, maybe a positive outcome in the longer run. And uh, that's what I'd like to say about uh, this particular service or, or uh, loss of this service. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rienko, followed by Councillor Rocha, please. Yeah, this is a very controversial uh, uh, topic, and I think we have to be reasonable in our in our expectations on uh, large uh, object uh, handling. I have no problems uh, uh, agreeing to uh, uh, having large object pick up at the landings in uh, in Go Home uh, Lake or in the landings in around Honey Harbor or whatever the landings might be. When it gets into the barging issue, I can't support that, uh, A, because it's going to be expensive. And I've been involved with the uh, district uh, waste management group for a number of years now. And all I do is hear about the horror stories that were involved with the barging issue. Uh, obviously, safety was one of them, but that wasn't the main issue. It was um, um, concerns with you know, the barge going out to, to a number of cottages. Uh, some people didn't come up that weekend and they didn't leave the stuff out and uh, it was a real uh, problem for uh, these barges to go around and so on. And um, I, I, it's the same thing if, if on inland, it, it, you know, if the Georgian Bay is having door-to-door -door barges then the inland people should have door-to-door -door pickup uh, for their large objects. So send me the truck to my place and pick up my large objects. Uh, I think we're all in the land, inland have to uh, muscle our, 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 our large objects into a trailer or a car and take it to uh, to the dump. So I, I think uh, uh, when it comes to the Georgian Bay, I think the, the, the individuals in Georgian Bay should be able to get their large objects in some kind of landing where it can be picked up. And I have no problem supporting that kind of project uh, out, in, uh, out, out in Georgian Bay. But to get into the barging, I think, if an association wants to get involved and do it uh, pay as you go, I have no problem with that. They take on the uh, on the uh, liability and the responsibility and so on. And so that's one way they can do it, but uh, they can pay for it um, themselves. But uh, um, I have no problem with any uh, large optic uh, delivery to the various landings. Thank you. Councilor Bochek. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, not often I disagree with my my counselor um, inland here, Mr. Wianco, but I totally agree with Councillor Cooper on this one that I've been dealing with the folks on Present Island for the past, uh, uh, well, since they cancelled the large pickup, the large barge pickup. And it worked very efficiently on Present Island. All the cottagers got together, brought all all their heavy materials to one landing spot on the island. The barge showed up, dropped the gate. It was all loaded on, packaged up, taken over and dumped into the bins at the uh, at the Honey Harbor Town Center there. They miss this. Um, there's just mattresses don't fit in their boat. Um, you know, we have a lot of real estate transaction these days where people will come up, they will buy a new place. It needs renovations. They need to throw out the old stove and the old fridge and to get that to shore from present island in a in a, a residential craft it is a lot of work and i think over the years they've streamlined this process and made it efficient enough that um, there shouldn't be any concerns and i'm going to fight uh, to the bitter end here to get barge pickup out on georgian bay to the uh, not necessarily door to door not going to individual cottage but having a central location for pickup and, and uh, Certainly, the, the islands that I've um, spoken to the folks on, they're willing to gather, you know, if you have an island with five or six residents on them, you know, they could, kind of, if it's possible, gather it all together and have one point where they could pick it up. But I think this, um, this program needs to be reinstated and I'll support it going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hazleton. Thank you, Mayor. I, uh... I would like to uh, make a, a recommendation here. Um, we know the stats from the past several years. We have them from what the district has done. Uh, so we know roughly what the garbage volumes are. Uh, we know the locations where they have picked up. 
uh, through the various places. Um, I'm going to probably kill myself here politically, but I think in Honey Harbor, I'm not sure we really need a barge pickup because if you're going to get some, put something in your boat, getting it to the town docks is probably as easy as it is getting it to some other barge location somewhere in Honey Harbor. So I'm not sure we really need it here, but the, um, uh, the other locations are, uh, are, are defined. Uh, we know what, uh, what we paid the district for them. And um, I would be, uh, actually I'd be in favor of a sole source uh, approach just to get on with the thing. Uh, we know that there is one vendor in our community uh, who focuses on uh, waste removal for, for, um, for individuals and uh, has a focal point for dealing with that. Um, and I think what we should be doing is taking the stats we've got, going to them, asking them to um, give us a quote for a barge pickup at, for example, President Island, uh, Cog Machine, you know, perhaps a couple other places, and, um, and then uh, be prepared, because I'm sure they can turn that around uh, very quickly. But if we ask them for that in the next uh, week, uh, I'm sure that we will have actionable information at our July meeting where we can approve those contracts to go out and, uh, and, and pick up this garbage. They would be uh, also, they would be capable of handling both the barging and the staff to uh, remove the, uh, the waste and because that's what their business is. So it's like a one-stop shop uh, and it's supporting a local vendor. So I, I, it just seems like it's a magic formula from my perspective. And um, uh, I think we should go ahead and uh, take that step, get some actionable information and make a decision and get on with it. Thank you. Council Jarvis, did you wanna jump into this? Thank you uh, for acknowledging uh, that perhaps I might wanna speak. Um, really, What's been said by Councillors Hazelton, Cooper, and uh, Bocek uh, are reflective of my thinking on this. Uh, I have been getting a fair bit of input from uh, the Cottages Association and Cognachine, and there is significant disappointment in the lack of uh, of pickups um, recently. The last pickup I recall was handled seemed to be handled very well. It was uh, the barge was brought up to a dock. There was a cross dock process. Uh, the, the people on the barge handled everything very professionally, and uh, I thought it went very smoothly. Um, there are significant logistical issues for cottagers that have big items, but I mean, they all somehow, in many cases, arrange to get the stuff out to their islands, and they should be able to get it back in is one argument. But um, my fear is that if we don't have something in place, the alternatives for many people are to dump the stuff in the lake, if not back in the bush. And I don't want that. Um, and and then there's the issue of, of hazardous waste that could be handled on these uh, these uh, things as well. So I, I'm all in favor of uh, Councillor Hazelton's uh, idea of uh, finding a private contractor who's willing to take the role on with a quote that we can uh, we can deal with. And uh, I'd like to get this. I'd like to get this process back in action because I think it is needed. Definitely not necessarily not just on uh, Go Home Lake, but uh, in the Bay, Present Island, uh, Cargachine. I suspect Wawa, Tasty, and Go Home might be uh, might have to be included in that as well. But yes, let's uh, let's move ahead on this. All right, um, Ms. Boutier, do you want to add a comment? Uh, thank you, Council. Uh, thank you through your worship. Um, I just want to reiterate that. You know, we have certain mandates that are at the lower tier, which is the Township of Georgian Bay. I have a really great um, image here that portrays what are the core responsibilities of the lower tier, what are shared responsibilities between the lower tier and the District of Muskoka, and also uh, the provincial government. And I was wondering, Mayor Kutsir, if you'd want me to bring up this image uh, on, on screen. Sure. So I think we really need to be mindful um, when talking about decisions of this sort that we stay in the proper lane. Um, we've been advised by legal counsel 
quite a few times that when we don't stay in our lane is when we have a potential for additional liabilities. So I just wanted to make it very clear that waste management is not even in the shared uh, responsibility between uh, the District of Muskoka and the area municipalities. So it's really important for Council to consider that we need to stay in our lane. Uh, writing a, uh, a motion to encourage the district to do something is absolutely acceptable. Um, doing something ourselves uh, when not in our mandate to do so is when the door opens really wide to uh, the township having additional liabilities, but also council uh, having bearing personal liabilities. All right, thank you. Um, I'm wondering if Councillor Douglas is listening in, if she can hear us at this point, or if she's still, I noticed that we lost Councillor Wienko there. And, oh, looks, looks like he's reconnecting because um, of the, the weather. I, I would like to make a few comments on this uh, before we go into a second round. I know that Councillor Cooper is, is, is keen for a second round. Um, this is yet again, yet again one of those issues. Um, I think we have to, um, where I somehow fall in the middle. I think one thing that we haven't mentioned that is worthy of mentioning is that one of the reasons that the um, district no longer wants to do barging is because in, in their opinion, um, the, the service was abused. It was abused in the sense that this was designed to pick up large objects. And um, in a number of their sites where they went uh, with their barge to pick up large objects, they got hazardous waste, they got small objects, they got construction lumber, they got or construction waste and, and lots of items that weren't on the list. Now they took them because they were there uh, but it, it absolutely went well beyond what they were um, what they were uh, expected or mandated to do, and I think that's something we have to take into account in any any future option we consider is to what degree do we restrict what people will bring to the barge, um, and we have to consider the the, the safety of the um, the individuals involved in the pickup. Um, and, and I'll say the same thing that we, we know that there are, are private organizations that are willing to pick up uh, garbage by barge, but they often have restrictions on what you can or cannot put into their container that you're filling. And, and one of the restrictions typically is no hazardous waste. Um, and so, you know, we have to recognize that. Um, the other element comes in to is cost. I, I, I have mentioned to a number of um, our residents when, when they've uh, talked to me about the, the large item pickup is that this is something in which we as a township have paid additional fees to the district. In other words, it's not included in your district taxes. It's an additional service and therefore you had to pay extra. They, some of them were surprised by that. They didn't realize that um, that, they, that there were extra, uh, extra taxes were collected for this service. They're, they're, they were, th because of course they always make the line that we do, they get no value for their tax dollar other than solid waste. That's uh, you don't want to line so often here. And they say, well, but now I'm paying extra for it. So then the question is, if we want to go down the road of private contractors providing the service, why should we as a township be making those arrangements as opposed to the group of people who are receiving it? Um, and also then, the, which also begs the question that we have to consider is why should the, the taxpayers who aren't receiving that service pay for it? Now we know there are many services that only some taxpayers receive and not others. And we can make that same argument about most of our district taxes, I, I, I fully accept that, but I think these all have to be considered in whatever possible solution that, that we may want to consider. Um, you know, along with, as, as uh, Ms. Boutiette pointed out, the, um, the, the, li the potential liabilities of getting into a, a realm there where we don't uh, normally provide the service. Um, 
and because of the, the way the, the province has uh, allocated responsibilities between the different levels uh, of, of government. Um, so I think it's something we have to be very careful about. Um, and with that, I see Ms. Doug Councillor Douglas has rejoined us. And so, Councillor Douglas, this is a topic that you initiated, but unfortunately, your connectivity was, I think, interfering with everything. I'm going to turn the screen over to you before we go to the other councillors for your comments, please. Yeah, I apologize about that. Um, right. I think this is a, a hot topic for all three of us councillors. I mean, well, for all the councillors, but uh, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that our our constituents, you know, our residents that pay the taxes really need this to happen. You know, these large article pickups, especially when you're out in the islands and you really can't get um, you, you don't have garbage pickup and you're, pay, you're already paying for this. So I think, you know, we've always had this done. I'm not sure about the other areas that I'm sure our two other councillors can speak to this, but we've always had this large object pickup once a year on Go Home Lake for sure, which is why I put the resolution together for this area. Um, but I do believe that all of the areas should be um, able to get this set up once, at least once a year, uh, whether it be a barge that goes out or whether the barge picks it up and takes it into uh, bins on, on land. Uh, I think it's a, a, a very important service because one thing that we know for sure, unfortunately, we do not have everyone that is um, environmentally conscious. And when they have large articles that they have no way of getting rid of because they don't have boats to take it out or whatever the reason may be, they end up in the lakes and in the back bush. And there's evidence of that all over the place. I, uh, I had a diver down uh, last weekend looking for something for me and the stuff that came up because I had them picking up all kinds of metal and things off the bottom of the lake. And, um, and what I've seen in the back bush, I see mattress springs, I see batteries, I see it's just awful. So I think this is something that we need to be responsible and we need to ask that this be done uh and it's an important thing for our environment as well as for our residents to you know have that opportunity to make sure they get they dispose of things correctly thank you thank you all right we'll go start round two councillor cooper followed by councillor hazelton please thank you mayor <clears throat> and um my fellow councillors for your comments i um I think it's important to point out that uh, there seems to be not intended, but misinformation with respect to some of these uh, issues around this uh, service. Um, at the District of Muskoka, we pay for all our solid waste services uh, uh, for the Township of Georgian Bay based on the service that we receive. So whether it's large garbage, or if you take out the large garbage, let me put it this way, we're still paying almost twice of what Lake of Bays is paying because we're buying a certain service. And, and the large garbage is just another service. So we are charged what we use. And that's pretty clear. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't think that it's, uh, you know, we added it on more recently, but there've been other services that we're charged for that are specific to the township of Georgian Bay. And I wanna make that very clear. I think there's a few other misunderstandings here. One is door-to-door -door service. This is not a door-to-door -door service in, in coastal Georgian Bay. Never has been. Well, I, 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 maybe I lie about that. There was a service about 70 years ago where a boat would go to your dock and pick up your garbage. But that was 70 years ago. So this is not door-to-door -door service. This is one location in a community like Cognachine where there are 600 residences and a lot of uh, large uh, items that need to be disposed of. In the past, not recently, but in the past, there have been some problems with some of these barges. And you know why? They were unsupervised. A barge was left uh, at one of my neighbors uh, for two or three days and people just drove by and threw stuff on the barge. Well, that was a dumb solution. You don't you know, having a barge sit there for two or three days, you're going to end up with all sorts of things that you don't want to have. So this this conception that it's, um, um, you know, dangerous and this and that and so forth is, is, I'm sorry, not correct. The last time we had this service in, for example, Cognachine, the barge was tied up to um, a, a dock in the Bone Island area. 
uh, and it worked exceedingly well. There were staff on the barge. It was Saturday from 10 to 2 or 3 or something like that. And it was very well supervised and carefully done. And if we decide in our service that uh, we're going to accept large garbage items, but not uh, all sorts of um, toxic matters or items like uh, you know paint cans and so on, maybe that's something that we need to consider. But but to take some of this large garbage uh, is uh, shouldn't be problematic, and and it hasn't been recently. So I, I think there's all sorts of misinformation here that that uh, needs to be dealt with. Um, so unsupervised barging is is not sensible. I also think that there's some real sense in having, uh, there's really two different kinds of issues here. There's the barge service, and then there's the land-based service. And I can see in Go Home uh, Lake, for example, Cynthia, that uh, that would probably make sense that it could be at your landing because just like we do in my area, we have to load our boat up with uh, that old stove and drive to a barge in my case, in your case, it would be to your landing. So, and the same uh, according to uh, Councillor Hazelton and Honey Harbor. So uh, once again, there's, there's different ways of dealing with this, but our community, our communities are expecting this. And I can tell you from the perspective of those that are out on coastal Georgian Bay, the services are so limited, so exceedingly limited that something like this is considered to be a very important service and for five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars a year in taxes, you expect something. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hazelton. Um, thank you. I uh, just wanted to add in, um, I was uh, disappointed to hear that the district didn't um, didn't take a more uh, screening type of process on their barge pickups uh, in the past and block hazardous waste and other things. Um, I think we uh, we have in the past been clear and you know any barge service should be clear. I've already been told by uh, one of the contractors in the area that the second that hazardous waste transitions from a resident to a commercial operator, it is now commercial hazardous waste and it is now a much more difficult thing to get rid of than residential hazardous waste. And so uh, if we were to contract with somebody to look after large item pickup, uh, they would definitely be blocking any hazardous waste that might be attempted to be blocked off. So a lot of those problems go away. Uh, like Councillor Cooper uh, has, has suggested, I, I am not aware of the problems. Uh, it's, it's sad that, that we hear about problems uh, after they've decided to stop the service when they've never told us about these problems before. So I find that very, very concerning. But um, uh, I, I would like to point out one other, I like anomalies, maybe I don't like a lot anomalies, but uh, here's another anomaly. Uh, it is the district responsibility to handle waste. Uh, but in our township, all waste from the township operations is privately contracted by the township and not through the district. And so we're already breaking the model um, in our township by having township staff contract separately with waste management services to dispose of township garbage. Um, and so I, says, I, I would recommend that uh, what we are embarking on here from a discussion perspective is already well supported by practice um, and that we should continue down this path. Thank you. Councillor Douglas, please. I mean, I think Councillor Jarvis was ahead of me. Would you like to go, Councillor Jarvis? <laughs> I was just trying to take it. Well, back. your hand was up before mine. That's how it okay. shows in the order here. Okay, okay. I'm trying to be. And we yeah. want to get you before you lose your connection. <laughs> okay, so um, just a couple of things on uh, what's been said here. I agree with uh, Councillor Cooper in regards to hazardous waste going onto a commercial barge, then becomes commercial and it's handled differently. I might make a suggestion. I'll just tell you how things have gone in the past for many, many years on this lake. Um, some of our private contractors are hired by individuals to take out big loads because they can't get it in their boats, but they do not take on any hazardous waste. Uh, not last year, but the previous year before COVID when we had um, 
large pickup at the docks, mostly what happened at the Miners Bay, what happens is people bring everything in in their own boats or they'll hire a private contractor now, albeit we are a much smaller lake than going out to Cognachine. So that probably makes no sense for you guys. Um, but as far as the uh, what they can put in, there's restrictions. They know that ahead of time, our association puts it out. I organized probably three years ago before COVID also to have a truck available uh, in the Miners Bay parking lot, which was quite a ways from the water for people to bring their hazardous waste down themselves. So they could bring it down in their own boats, um, take it up the road to the hazardous waste truck, which was there and deal with it that way. And then that way it was out of the hands of the contractors and there was no mishaps in any way. So just, uh, just, just so you are aware of how we've always dealt with it. We are a smaller body of water. So I understand about having one contractor's barge go out to your area, that makes sense, but it, I would agree it has to be manned or, or everything gets thrown on it as people drive by. So um, I'm very much in favor of all the communities being looked after for this. And I, I agree, I think district has, <laughs> I feel like we're being double charged to be honest with you, but we need this for our community. And I think it's very important that we do reword the resolution today to include everyone. Um, I maybe should have consulted with you guys first on that, but anyways, that's what we're here today for. And let's get something happening here for our communities because I think it's important to keep the environment and, and for the community period. Thank you. Um, Ms. Douglas, uh, or Councillor Douglas, sorry. You say you have a resolution? I'm not sure a clerk has seen it. Uh, yeah. Did send, I did, oh, okay, maybe not. I asked for it to be put on the agenda. Maybe we didn't do a resolution. Sorry. Because if you have one, if you could forward that to- uh, no, 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 I think I, think I wrote to um, our clerk or to uh, Ms. Boutier to ask that it be put on the agenda and maybe we did not do the resolution, correct? Okay, okay. Right. so sorry, my, my mistake. Well, that's just as well. We need a resolution of some sort today, I think to cover all of our communities with this issue. And I don't think it should be dragged out. I, I think that we should do something today on this. Councilor Jarvis. Yeah, I'd like to see something done, done today as well. Um, so let's see, where do we start? Uh, so Julie, uh, the garbage service is supposed to be provided by the district. Uh, it is abundantly obvious to the taxpayers in my ward and parts of several other wards that there is basically no garbage service for which the, the district says they are in charge of. The garbage service that is provided, they are not dictating how it is done. It is contracted out by the municipality, correct? One more time. Just to clear that up, I'm, we're clear on that. So it's so the district is not paying for the garbage service we currently get. They, sorry, they're not coordinating it, we're coordinating it. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. They coordinate it, but they contract yes. it out. Through your worship, the all of the waste services in the township of Georgian Bay are coordinated, administered, and paid for by the district municipality of Muskoka. And then billed back to the, each municipality. Correct. Yes. Okay. Through a tax levy. Right. So that so is distributed by assessment. So the more assessment pays a bigger piece of the pie. Yeah, okay. well, what if, I guess there's going to be a disagreement there, but we'll hear we'll hear Mr. Cooper, Councilor Cooper. I don't mind his input here. Yeah. Okay, you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm sorry, but if you look at the solid waste charges that go out. You'll see, for example, uh, Lake of Bays, their fees are based on having four transfer stations. They're charged for the services that are there, period. Correct. And However, the, the, pie, the piece of the pie that is billed to Georgian Bay is redistributed to all of the Georgian Bay taxpayers based on their assessment value. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about apples and oranges here. We get billed for the service we get, Lake of Bays, who pay half of what we pay, uh, distributed out to their ratepayers. I understand that. And and as far as what you're discussing there, uh, as uh, and doing it on assessment, that's maybe something that we need to look at, uh, at in the future, depending on what kind of special services. Because I'd be happy to pay for large uh, uh, garbage and at a marina, 
and I'd be miles ahead of, of uh, some of the services, uh, example in Honey Harbor where they get three different services, roadside, uh, marina service, and, and a uh, bin site. So, uh, you know, it, we can argue that point at another time, but we are being billed by the district for those services. I just wanted to clarify that. I'm, thank you uh, for letting me uh, step in there, both uh, Julie and Stephen. Yeah. So what I was getting at is I just have a, a, a number of very frustrated taxpayers who realize our taxes are going to pay for things like airports, hospitals, a lot of facilities we do not use. Right? I think we can all acknowledge the number of these facilities uh, are not things that our municipality generally uses. And the frustration is significant. There's got to be some uh, benefit to being a taxpayer in this community. And up until COVID or just before, the large garbage pickup, particularly in areas like Cognachine, I'll take President Island as well, out on the Bay, were one uh, obvious uh, benefit to being a taxpayer. Uh, it's a significant uh, amount of taxes we're paying just for that service, but that's, that's life as it is. Um, there's really would like to see this thing reintroduced. I have, I really disagree with the argument that the, the service, uh, it can only be determined or, dis or uh, directed from the uh, district. We've got to come up with some solution to work around that. Uh, we need the pick, we need the service. Councilor Ankle. Well, I'm still quite concerned the direction this conversation is going, uh, we're, we're back into uh, district bashing again, and we don't get anything from our district taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And they have lived through this whole issue of barging, and yet we don't have them at the table to learn. I think we lost Council Ranko mid sentence cheaper if we had the responsibility to do it. And I, I think uh, Councillor Cooper had it, you know, there's misinformation and we're creating our own misinformation by not having uh, the authorities at this table talking about uh, barge pickup and so on. So unless the district comes to uh, uh, this meeting and explains to us their background and their concerns and the problems they've had, I can't get on board with this whole thing because we're making it up as we go along and thinking we know better. So I think we need to have the district in this conversation before I can get on board with any of this stuff. All right, um, Councillor Bocek, do you want to add to the conversation before I run, wind, wind down round two and then we're going to get into an action plan? No, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to support the heavy barge pickup. I have no islands in my ward in, on Georgian Bay. And I've never had any comment from any of my island residents on uh, Gloucester Pool or Little Lake about having barge pickup. So I know the frustration that is built up out on the bay and <clears throat> I will certainly uh, go along and, and support any efforts at district to reinstate this. And uh, not much more to say about it than that. Yeah, I just had a little power flash here. Maybe I'll get cut out at one point. But, but in the meantime, um, we could talk about this forever. And I don't want us to talk about it forever. So I'm going to try to get this conversation wound down. And if we want to get a resolution out of it, we better start writing it. Um, a few comments I want to make. One is we we must, we should acknowledge that the um, uh, that, that the district is planning a couple of large item solid waste pickups, but they are a shoreline, not um, not a barge. And from my understand it, their plans now are for sometime in the autumn, September or October, I believe. So um, we, we have, and, and the other observation I want to make is we are, as you know, uh, we've hired a consultant to do a report on solid waste, something that 
should have been done by district, but they haven't done it yet. They postponed it and we, we made a decision as council, which they are now half paying for, they being district, to uh, do our own work this year to try to make some constructive suggestions of how solid waste uh, overall can be handled in the future. And I don't doubt at the public meetings that will happen next month, um, we will probably hear from the public on large objects as well as let me call it regular garbage. Uh, I, I fully expect that. So what we have in front of us is the idea, the possibility, and, and I see that Councillor Hazelton has drafted a, a um, resolution. We have to decide, are we going to make a much stronger request to district that they provide service like they have in the past? Or are we going to instruct staff to find a way for us as a township to provide that service in spite of the um, rules and regulations that the provinces have put upon us? Um, or are we going to, on a, as a third option, encourage um, the, uh, the various associations or groups of cottagers to make their own arrangements? Um, you can shake your head, Councillor Cooper. I'm just laying out the possibilities that we can consider. Um, I, what I, I, I don't want us to get into a resolution that is, let me call it impractical or, uh, or call it, if I can use a word from yesterday, aspirational, if, if it's not really gonna achieve anything for us. So I, what I have, I have from Councillor Hazelton, for instance, and I don't know if all of you are reading your chat, but be it resolved, the council directs staff to request a quote from Big Red Works for a barge based large item pickup. And this quote should be based on locations in Georgian Bay, excluding Honey Harbor, and using target volumes based on data provided to the township from the district over the past 10 question mark years. That this quote be provided to the township prior to the July council meeting in order to, for a decision to be made for summer service. So that's basically asking uh, staff to get a quote. From, from a local supplier who we know have uh, offer on their menu uh, cleanups. Um, okay, and, and from, from Ms. Way, we have a draft here that is aware as management services are under review within the District of Muskoka, be it resolved that council directs staff to investigate options for large item pickup services in the township of Georgian Bay and report back to council should, should to council, and which should include the variables inland and water access only services, cost analysis, and vendor sourcing. So that's where we're starting. Ms. Boutiet, I'll allow your input, and then we'll go to our councillors. Uh, I'm afraid um, through you, your worship, um, I, I hate to sing the same song, but we don't have the resources in-house to be doing this homework. Um, and we are not comfortable with stepping out of our mandate, even though uh, this would not be the first time. So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Oh, you're muted, Councillor Cooper. S sorry. A um, few things uh, I'd like to point out. and. Uh, the district dropped this service for us, did not consult with us, did not ask to come and speak to council about this. And so, you know, to say we didn't uh, involve them is I think a, 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 a bit over the top. I didn't see anybody come and say, what do you got, tell us about your experience. I didn't see hear anybody come to the township and, and ask about some of the things that we're talking about today. I didn't see anything like that. So. Would I be happy to discuss it with the district and, and with the rest of council? Absolutely. Uh, but it sounds like they're not interested in providing that service. Therefore, we have little choice but to go out on our own. And uh, we all know that uh, municipalities in Ontario, uh, many of them contract out their services. And I'd like to see where the province and the district are gonna take us and beat us up we're going outside and getting our own services. And as has been pointed out by Councillor Hazelton, 
our township presently has ser have a service picking up um, solid waste at our facilities. So we're already doing it. So in a very small way, but we already have contracted services. I, I would also like to make, there, there's quite a bit of, um, as I said earlier, misinformation. And that's also what we need to communicate to the district because they're, they're providing, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're going back in history 10, 15 years ago and, and pointing out where there were problems in the past. I understand that. That's not the problem today. So let's deal with the facts from today. Uh, Councilor Bocek, I think if you check the ward boundary, you're going to find out uh, that I think President Island actually, funny, funnily enough, uh, falls into Ward 3. So take a look. It, it was interesting. I think you may find that's in your ward. That's what that I would explain uh, all the phone calls that I've gotten <laughs> over the past three years. And Al didn't get them. I did. Well, I know. And I pointed that out to Councillor Hazelton and, and he said, oh, really? I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and, he, and he said, oh, well, Brian, I'd love to know. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, guys. So there's a lot of um, misunderstanding, misinformation, and, and uh, you know, it, uh, we're, we're all happy to sort of uh, uh, make sure that we do the right thing for present island. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm not interested in it, because I certainly am. And um, I, I think we need to remember that. And uh, I understand that the township doesn't want to take on this responsibility, but if if we have to remember that we're currently shipping um, something like $2 million of our 10 million over to the district that's related to solid waste. And maybe we need to uh, look, examine that whole piece and uh, um, maybe contract some let's, of it to, to the district and, and some of it elsewhere. So there we go. Let's concentrate on whether or not we come up with a resolution today. Councillor Hazelton. Um, I would like to be uh, respectful to the comments shared with us by our acting CEO, where she isn't confirmed, con convinced that she has staff that could jump on all, all over this. And I would like to essentially challenge my fellow councillors. Um, this is a topic that uh, I suspect there is broad consensus, and we actually might be able to work cooperatively together to come up with a recommendation and we can bring it back to council in July. And just like we bring resolutions from time to time forward for council consideration and township consideration, I can see working cooperatively with Councillor Bocek, Councillor Douglas, Cooper, Jarvis, and Wienko, uh, and the mayor uh, to do essentially what I had suggested earlier and uh, and get a quote from a local contractor that we can consider because right now all we're doing is talking mm -hmm. and we're either talking about it's not our, our responsibility or we can't do it or the district ain't doing it or whatever I'd like to get past the talking part and um, work cooperatively with my fellow councillors uh, and come up with a recommendation that we can uh, put into action and do something uh, positive for our uh, residents. Councillor Douglas, followed by Ms. Butia. Oh, okay, and respectfully to all of our councils who have commented today, thank you. I think all of us are on the same page as trying to get this resolved for our constituents. Um, there's there is a bit of a two part and I'm not trying to don't read into this please because sometimes words just don't quite cut it. Um, Go home lake does not require a barge so it, when we do this resolution. It is a little bit of a separate whether we do two resolutions or one resolutions it might might be better with two or I, I think just because one is quite different from the other. Um, but I do think that we are quite capable I think our staff is not comfortable with this I agree with Councillor Hazelton. I think we can craft it. I, I think we could craft it ourselves. And has just because I missed part of this, di has district unequivocally said they are not doing large object for pickup for Go Home Lake? I, did they? Sorry, I missed that. To the best of my knowledge, they have stated they will be doing a large, large item pickups in the fall, but I don't think they finalized dates. And I honestly don't recall whether Go Home Lake was on that list. Ms. Boutiette, do you recall? I don't even know where that. I'd be surprised if it wasn't because it's been there for years, but maybe Ms. Plutia could confirm that. Because maybe. Sorry, 
Through your worship, the email was pretty general. It said there are two scheduled in the fall. It didn't say where and it didn't have dates or times. Uh, and those were to be confirmed by uh, a new coming employee at the district level. So uh, they didn't say they weren't doing it. They just said they didn't have the details. Uh, does that lead us, and I know this is sounding like I'm only taking care of my own word and I, it's not meant to be this way, but because they already have committed, I'm, I'll be surprised if it's not go home late because they've always done it. Can we do a resolution that just whips it off to district and we get that out of the way and work on a resolution that has to do with the in or the um, the bay and the barging situation, get the wording down for how we separate uh, control on it and and uh, do that one. Any suggestions there? Like I said, I'm not just trying to take care of mine, but I have a funny feeling that it's already in there with the district or will be. I think one thing we can do is, is um ask district for clearer indication of what they are willing or not willing to do. I think, um, I, I, I believe we require that confirmation from district sooner rather than later, yeah. because um, that has to be the, the, the starting point of whatever we come up with. And, and, and I think that that is very important for us to do. And, and, and then also to inform our residents, because if, if it turns out, and I'm just making this up, if it turns out the last weekend of September, they're doing a large item pickup at Go Home Lake, then the Go Home Lake residents can decide, well, is that a reasonable compromise or are they upset because it's not in the summer? As an I'm just making this as an example. But no, I, I, I do think the starting point is that we need from district as soon as possible confirmation of what services they're willing to provide this summer or in regards to large item pickup. I agree with you. Um, maybe I can ask if um, Julie, our staff could reach out to them and get confirmation on what they are talking about in that last correspondence to you as far as the areas go. Because then if they're willing to come to Go Home Lake like they've done for years, uh, because we don't have barging services, it's not as complicated. Um, then that, that makes that good, just go away. We just need a date. And I think it was September last year. So that'll just make that portion of it go away. And then we can focus strictly on the wording around the barging out to the uh, Bay Area communities that so badly need it. And uh, I'm 100% in support with my fellow councillors on that. I mean, just because we may get it on some part of my word does not mean that I don't have great concern for what's going on out in that bay because again ecologically I know a lot of things end up in the bush and out in the water and I I think we need to seriously look at it even if district does not consider that to be part of their service um you know they may include go home lake but we the bigger issue right now as I see it is the bay so just, just for information I found the note that came from Fred Yawn May 17th yeah and it says there will be two scheduled large item shoreline events in the fall. Details, including dates and times, have not been finalized. Um, and it, and it says, this is, the information will be forwarded to you when we know. Um, please note that barging events have been discontinued or, and are not budgeted. It is a resident's responsibility to get the items that meet the program guidelines to the designated event location. And then he ends with, as you know, from the cost analysis provided, large events are very costly, highly abused, and only benefit a very small number of people. For that reason, I'm, I am sure that it will be an ongoing topic of discussion. Okay, and let's not address that because we already have that last sentence, but that's all we've had from district is what my point is that they've talked to uh, large item events in the fall, no locations, no dates, no times. Can I just ask a quick question? I'm not aware of that. Um, what, oh, sorry. Um, I'm just kind of where where have, guys have they traditionally put bins down in in Honey Harbor for the bay? Okay, so it would make sense to me that the two events we're talking about is the Go Home Lake and the Honey Harbor. The the issue is going to be the barging issue part of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. If we could get some clarification on those two locations or those two pickups. And then at least we have a starting point of what we're dealing with. If it's just the barging, then we need to get some costs. And uh, uh, let's bring it back to council for um, a township portion of a district isn't going to do it. Then we have to look at it as a township and make sure that that surface is covered. 
that's my thought. Ms. Boutier. Councilor Cooper, if you want to be recognized, you can put your hand up like the others. I did have it up. I did have it up. Thank you. Ms. Boutier. Through your worship, I want to reiterate the council role per section 224 of the Municipal Act has bullets from A to F, uh, including a D.1, uh, which identifies the role of council. Um, it is really, really important and for the safeguard of each councillor's personal assets that you stay within those responsibilities. What happens when you step outside of those boundaries? When you do things outside of your role, it can nullify the protection provided to you by Section 448 of the Act, which um, can put your personal assets at risk. Please be mindful of ensuring that you're staying within those roles and responsibility of a council member. Thank you. Councillors Lianco, Jarvis, and Cooper, please. CEO, CEO that got, got me all worried now. Um, yeah, it, 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 I, I think uh, Julie has a good, some good points there, and I think they should be allowed to do some kind of research on this. I still want to know why the district is not doing barging. I think we got to learn from their uh, past experiences, uh, obviously the more recent experiences, and why they, they came to the decision that they don't want to do barging anymore. Uh, we don't want to make the same mistakes uh, they made or whatever, but I think someplace in the resolution or someplace in direction to staff, we have to ask, uh, we, all the councillors here need to be told why the district does not want to get involved in barging. Councillor Jervis. Mindful of uh, statements uh, made here by our acting CAO, and I appreciate those very much. So thank you, Julie. Um, can we not uh, go back to district and as taxpayers, I think we have a right to demand a formal and fast response on why we are not getting large garbage barge pickup out in the bay, for instance, and that uh, based on our information, and I think our information is pretty correct, and uh, Councilor Cooper has stated this before, is that we have had no issues with dangerous goods in the last couple of pickups, particularly in Cognosheen, because I was there, um, and demand that we get the stuff reinstated for the season. I, there is no reason why they shouldn't be doing it. Um, I think uh, the somebody's coming up with some very, very lame excuses for dropping the ball in this, and we got to get it back on. Um, so if we are restricted in what our roles as councillor are, councillors are, which makes sense, and if as a municipality we have certain restrictions, then certainly the district has obligations, and this has got to be one of them that we've got to demand a response to. Um, I use the word demand. I, I'm hoping they could be demanded in a polite manner, but still a demand um, that we get some sort of action sooner rather than later. We can't wait on this. Thank you. Councilor Cooper. Thank you. And uh, we do need action. And um, <laughs> I think we said one of the things we wanted to find out is the, the district's position on certain things. We have and saw recently. Uh, Fred Yon's um, response and what his views were of certain services. Uh, I don't concur with his comments. He didn't, as I pointed out, decide to come and talk to council about uh, what their problems were. We can give very recent information as Councillor Jarvis has pointed out in terms of the type of service that was there and how it was um, taken care of. So I think that's important to understand. And also, I'd just like to ask uh, our acting CAO, how is it the councillors of the district, uh, township, sorry, township of the archipelago deal with solid waste and and we don't? They're uh, single yeah. tier through yeah, your so, worship. Yeah. So they're still councillors. Yes, but they're a single tier municipality. They don't have that other level of governance. 
So maybe we should become single tier, or, or I'd like to know from a lawyer that says to, that I am responsible, but these guys aren't. I don't understand how that can be possible. I'd love to go to court over that one. So I'm, I'm not buying it, I'm sorry. And maybe we need to go to the minister, thank you. Well, you're now just got into a whole separate realm that I'm not gonna to entertain today about uh, single tier versus two tier, because um, we know that there's a lot of strong opinions about that in different directions. But I think Councillor Jarvis is actually helping na narrow this down. I think step one, what we need to do is go back to district um, and ask them for almost as soon as possible, a very clear response as to what services they're willing to provide, A, and B, if they're canceling barred services, we want a full explanation as to why, so that we can ad perhaps address their concerns. But that it is, this is a service that we, in the township of Georgian Bay, very clearly would like to provide our um, residents, because we think it is, it, it, it is a valuable, important service and part of the solid waste mandate that they should be meeting. Now, if you can just put a whereas and a therefore in front of what I just said, let's get this thing done. Okay, and what Ms. Way has drafted for us is whereas waste management services are under review within the District of Muskoka, be it resolved the council requests District of Muskoka to confirm dates and locations for the 2022 large item pickup and the council requests the district council to reinstate barge pickup co at cost borne uh, by the 2020, 2023 waste levy. Um, in the township of Georgian Bay. Why do you have the 2023, Ms. Boot yet? The 2022 waste levies are already established and okay. issued. All right, good answer. So, Council Jarvis. Just pursuant to the comments made by our C Acting CAO, the waste levy that's been issued and uh, taken care of for 2022, is it any different than what we've paid in the past? Oh, it varies every year based on budget. And, and I'm just and, wondering if it included uh, large item pickup. No, according to the, the, the email we got from um, from Fred, um, barging events are not budgeted. So the, they, didn't put, they didn't put it in the budget. Through your worship, the two large item pickups are budgeted, but the barging, barging, barging is events. not included. No. Ah. Yeah, good point. All right, Councillor Cooper. As part of our communication with the district, I don't think it has to be in the resolution, but I think it's important to understand um, what has happened here. And I think we need to maybe get in touch with Jamie Clough at the district, the lawyer at the district. They have abdicated a certain responsibility. And if they've abdicated it, I'd really like to know why we can't go out and fill the service ourselves. They've walked away from services that they've been providing us in the past. It's unacceptable. I'd okay. like an answer from the lawyer about that. Thank you. All right. Maybe we should add a second whereas, you know, you, right now it says, whereas waste management services are under review within the District of Muskoka, and whereas the District of Muskoka uh, is not providing, is, is not offered barging events uh, to service the residents of Township of Georgian Bay. Then, be it resolved, the council requests the District of Muskoka to confirm dates and locations for the 2022 large item pickups. And the council requests the District Council to reinstate the barge pickup at cost borne by 2023, borne by the 2023 waste levy. This will get the ball rolling because this, 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 this resolution will allow us as the staff and mayor to go back to a district and say we, we we need something from you because you know council is has, we have so many frustrated residents that uh, and this is the service we want provided and, and i've heard it very clearly from council that uh they will 
absolutely want to address the, and I quote Fred Yon, highly abused service. We will, we want to cut back on that abuse. We will make it very clear to our residents that what is and is not being allowed to be loaded on the barges. So I'm going to have moved by Councillor Cooper, seconded by Councillor Hazelton. Whereas waste management services are under review within the District of Muskoka, and whereas the District of Muskoka is not offering barging pickup service to the Township of Georgian Bay, be it resolved the Council requests the District of Muskoka to confirm the dates and locations of the 2022 large item pickup, pickups, um, and the Council requests the District Council request the District Council reinstate the barge pickup at costs borne by the 2023 waste levy in the township of Georgian Bay. Councillor Hazelton. Would you just put that back up, please? Uh, the last, uh, that clause needs to in reinstate the 2022 barge pickup. If we don't state that, they will assume it's 2023. So reinstate the 2022 barge pickup. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Jarvis, followed by Councilor Cooper. I know I try to always be diplomatic uh, in my uh, discourse, but would it be better for us to, uh, in uh, item line, line three and four, remove request and put in the word demand? Or is that just being too uh, not appropriate? How about urge? That something urge? something that indicates to them that we're getting a little fed up with this whole thing. Request is like ah, they can they can stick in the uh, in the do later tray. Yeah. Same thing in the fourth paragraph, Karen. Councilor Cooper. The uh, second statement, uh, I think it should read, whereas the District of Muskoka is not offering barging pickup, no longer, not not offering, no longer offering. Thank you. Ms. Boot, yeah. Through your worship, um, I, I think this is the proper direction. Um, I just want council to be aware that means in 2023, we might have a double up in cost if, if we choose to uh, do barging services in 2023 as well. So uh, just to be aware that if there is a doubled up cost, um, you'll, you, you council, uh, we'll hear about it in 2023. <laughs> yep, that, that, that's a fair observation. All right. All those, actually, uh, I can't see everybody. I'll say all those in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that has passed unanimously. All right. That's been quite the discussion, but I think it's very important to our residents and therefore worthwhile. Okay, I obviously didn't give us the usual 11 o'clock break, but now I think our, our meeting is actually over once we do the formalities. So I have moved by Councillor Hazelton, seconded by Councillor Cooper, it resolved that Planning Council adopt bylaw 2022-059 to confirm the proceedings of the June 7th, 2022 Council meeting. Should that be Planning Council meeting? Not that it matters, but all those in favor and that is carried and moved by councillor douglas seconded by councillor bocek be it resolved the planning council is now adjourned at 11 23 a.m until july 12 2022 at 9 a.m for the call of the chair all those in favor and that is carried. And we are done.